From the previous videos, we know that there are two types of weathering, mechanical and chemical. We defined them both and thoroughly discussed mechanical weathering. Now we will turn our attention to chemical weathering. Chemical weathering decomposes the rock and thus alters the rock's mineral composition. The resulting weathered materials are generally more stable at the Earth's surface than the original materials. There are three important mechanical weathering processes, and all three, water often, but not always, plays an important role. We're going to go through each of these major processes, giving examples and also noting under which conditions or for which rocks these processes are important. The first type of chemical weathering we're going to discuss is oxidation. Oxidation is a chemical process where oxygen combines with other elements, often metals, to produce a new product. Generally, water provides the oxygen. Water, as you know, is H2O. We are familiar with this process as rusting is a form of oxidation. Rusting is the oxidation of iron or aluminum to form iron oxides and aluminum oxides. Rusting can occur in the metals that make up your car, but it also occurs in the iron and aluminum rich minerals in rocks. In either case, the resulting iron oxide minerals are the same. A reddish brown mineral called hematite and a yellowish brown mineral called limonite. These iron oxide minerals commonly give color to rock surfaces and soils. The chemical reaction that takes place to form hematite from iron is shown here. This is an example of native iron turning into the iron oxide hematite. You can see the coloration of hematite and limonite here and also in this next slide here. Notably as oxidation takes place in rocks the oxidation products, hematite and limonite, are usually softer and easier to remove than the original minerals. A second form of chemical weathering is hydrolysis. Like oxidation, hydrolysis is a chemical weathering process that changes the mineral composition of the rock. Also like oxidation, water is involved. Silicate minerals which you learned are the most abundant mineral class in the Earth's crust, are generally susceptible to hydrolysis. In hydrolysis, the water molecule actually gets incorporated into the new mineral structure. And generally, hydrolysis products are softer and weaker than the original minerals in a rock. A great example of hydrolysis occurs when feldspar, the most common mineral in the Earth's crust, undergoes hydrolysis to produce clay minerals. This is why clay is so abundant in our soils. It comes from the hydrolysis of feldspar. One rock that contains a great deal of feldspar is granite. All the pink and white minerals in granite are, are types of feldspars. Thus, when granite weathers, it produces clays. If you've ever picked up a very old exposed piece of granite, it may actually just crumble in your hands. This is because the feldspars, the pink and white minerals, have turned to, to clay minerals, which are very crumbly, and the whole rock can crumble apart. Interestingly, the other minerals in granite are biotite or amphibole, which are rich in iron and can undergo oxidation. Those are the black minerals in granite, and then quartz, Quartz is a very common mineral in granite, and it's actually resistant to both oxidation, hydrolysis, and also dissolution. It's very resistant to chemical weathering, so it ends up that these little pieces of quartz end up on our beaches and in our rivers, etc., as granite otherwise weathers away. Your textbook discusses carbonation as the third form of chemical weathering. In our lesson, we will use a more general term, dissolution. Many minerals readily dissolve in water. The mineral that makes up table salt, halite, is one such example. Essentially, the polar nature of water, 
allows it to dissociate and dissolve other polar substances. In this picture, you can see a, a model showing a, a, some halite, which is chemically sodium chloride. And this is an ionic compound that the sodium has a slightly positive charge and the, the chlorine has a slightly negative charge. And we can see that the water molecule, which is also polar, basically attacks and surrounds each of these individual ions. The oxygen, which has a partial negative charge in water, surrounds the sodium ion here, which has a partial positive charge. And the chlorine molecule, which has a partially negative charge, is surrounded by the, the positive portion of the water molecule, the hydrogen, essentially dissolving the sodium and the chlorine. In the environment, the dissolution and subsequent removal of minerals within a rock changes the rock's total chemistry. Additionally, these dissolved minerals will invariably recrystallize somewhere else. An important point regarding the dissolution of minerals is that acidic conditions will accelerate dissolution and cause minerals to dissolve that would not otherwise dissolve. Thus, as rainfall in lakes and streams become more acidic due to acid rain, and or the oceans become more acidic due to climatic change, we can expect more dissolution. This is especially problematic for shelled organisms. Most shelled organisms make their shells out of the mineral calcite, or another closely related mineral. And calcite readily dissolves under acidic conditions. As the Earth's oceans become more acidic, shelled organisms will have a harder time surviving. This may endanger many other life forms that are dependent on the shelled organisms. There are two very common rocks that are made out of calcite. The sedimentary rock limestone, which is essentially made out of microscopic or crushed shells, and the metamorphic rock marble, which is formed by metamorphism of the limestone. Can you tell which tombstone here is made of marble? The two tombstones are the same age and are in a cemetery on the East Coast that has issues regionally with acid rain. One of these tombstones is made from granite and the other is made from marble. Notably, there are many, many structures like statues and buildings that are made from marble. So this dissolution that occurs actually causes millions of dollars worth of damage each year in the United States to buildings and other structures. Limestone is commonly used as a building material as well, but it's also used in the making of cement. So any building that's got cement in it, which is many buildings, or any bridge or road that has cement in it, which is most, is also susceptible to this dissolution. As usual, I encourage you to stop the video here and be sure that you can answer some fundamental questions about chemical weathering.